Are you ready to blow your audience away with a great experience? Well, listen up. You've come to the right place. Grab your notepad and sit back. The show is ready to begin. Welcome to the Chris Rissy Podcast, where small business owners and entrepreneurs get firsthand tips and insight on creating ultimate personal experiences. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, it's Chris Rissy again, and thanks for tuning in to the Chris Rissy Podcast. This is episode number three. And uh, in this episode, I'm talking to Caroline Sarda, who is a small business entrepreneur. She's started two businesses now, uh, XL Vita and Starling Natural. Um, she's uh, a woman that I've known for the past couple of years. I've worked with her on, on a project. Uh, I've consulted with her and, uh, she has made such a big difference in her own life. Um, and, and she now has shared a little bit of that in this interview. If you want to get more notes on the interview with Caroline, make sure to head over to chrisrissy.com slash EP3. And uh, there I've shared some of the information, some of the links to her website, a recap of what we discussed, and uh, a few other items. So uh, enjoy this episode, and uh, here we go. Hey, Caroline, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Chris. How are you doing? I'm doing actually great because you're on my my podcast interview. (laughs) To which I'm very grateful for the opportunity to you know talk with you this morning. So thank you. I'm looking forward to it. For 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 you listening, this is my second interview with Caroline, and I or not second interview with Caroline, but my second interview overall in the podcast. And I've known Caroline for um what is it a couple of years now. Uh, that's it. Yeah. About two and a half years. Okay. And, uh, Caroline and I have worked together, uh, on a project. Um, but I've also consulted with Caroline and, and we've, we've, I've watched Caroline grow and that's, that's been great because it seems like you, you thought you knew where you were going, then actually opened up, um, kind of explored things and now have really found where, what you wanted to do and where you needed to go. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Well, that's good to hear. That's usually a very hard thing to do is we feel like as entrepreneurs and small business owners that we think we've got things figured out or at least as as far as we want to figure things out and try to move forward with it. And then, you know, we we run into issues where we wish we would have had more guidance or um, gotten more answers, more input and explored a little bit further. But you know, that's kind of everybody's story. We we start things, stop, learn, and then start again. And it repeats. Absolutely. And it repeats and it repeats. So and, and and in business you have to be flexible because um, you know, times change, people change, people's interests change. And if you don't change with what the market bears, you know, you will not have a long term sustainable business. You know, so. one thing that I've really decided about myself in business is that I know nothing (laughs) and all the answers are out there. I just have to ask the questions. That's, Mm -hmm. that's what it's come down to. And when, once I finally ask a question, then I get an answer. Absolutely. And I think it's key. And that was definitely one of my initial challenges just because I'm used to, you know, excelling in the, in the jobs that I've had in the past and, you know, starting my first business, I thought, you know, I've been successful in other projects and jobs that I've had. This is going to be easy peasy. And, you know, I definitely had a wake up call where, you know, having your own business is the ultimate challenge. It's the ultimate in personal growth and development. And it's everyday challenge, but it's wonderful to, it's a wonderful experience. And to be honest, I recommend it to everybody. Well, it sounds grow- like, well, go ahead go ahead and let you fin- finish that. Finish that no, statement. I was, gonna, I was just gonna say, you know, if you want if you want to grow as an individual, start a business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, words to live by. <laughs> well, Caroline, it sounds like you're ready to tell us your story. Yes, absolutely. Well, I um, even though I'm 100 percent French, I'm definitely not your typical 
French person and that I love to work. And of course, I'm generalizing uh, the stereotype of, you know, the lazy French people. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound French and I, I haven't known you to be lazy. <laughs> well, exactly. I know I came when I was seven. I guess that, that's what happened. But, you know, I started working at 15 and have always loved to work. I love a good challenge. And, um, you know, did the whole corporate America thing, working for one of the, the biggest national banks. And um, and four and a half years ago, I had the opportunity to start my own business and I ran with it. I said, you know, no more corporate culture. I want to do my own thing. I want to um, see what I'm capable of doing. And, you know, knowing that if I had my own business, I would be able to have bigger influence um, because I did see a lot of challenges working with, you know, big corporate culture, Mm -hmm. you know, company of hundreds of thousands of employees and, you know, being just a number, it just made it a lot harder for me to have impact, you know, with, in people's lives. and so I wanted more for myself and uh, decided to start this business, um, Excel Vita, which is my first business, which is an e-commerce website that is the beauty and wellness. So I've had that for four and a half years, even though that was not how I started the business. Initially, it was just going to be about health. And the reason for that is my husband of 10 years has had a lot of health issues and over the past you know, 10 years, 10 plus years, you know, I've been exposed to all kinds of amazing natural health products, different modalities. And I realized, you know, that you have to take your health and your well-being into your own hands. And so that's exactly what we did because the doctors weren't helping us and giving him diagnoses that really just didn't um, help us in any way, shape or form. So we started just exploring more and more, uh, testing different things and being, you know, true lab rats. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, when I decided to create my own business, I wanted to really help people feel better and not accept the status quo of, you know, you're 40 years old. It's normal for you to have um, a gut and to be low on energy. You know, I'm 41 and I feel better now at 41 than I did at 25. Yeah. And so that's definitely one of my hopes with my business is to you know help empower to take um empower people to take better care of themselves, you know, to take responsibility and to not accept the status quo. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen the I've seen the trend um here lately or maybe it's a fad, but it seems like people are really starting to get healthier. I know I have. I know people uh, my family members have have done it. Maybe you really started something. <laughs> I'd like to think so, because I'd like to think, you know, that, um, well, yeah, I want to make an impact in this world and, and, you know, just being able to touch people's lives, um, makes me go to sleep at night with a smile on my face. So, well, you know, you're telling me, you're telling me what, how most small businesses start, how most entrepreneurs dive into creating a business. It's, they found their passion, they found a reason, and now they want to share it and tell it to the world. And, uh, that's absolutely what you're saying. And I mean, I got into this, I got into business the same way. Um, Mm -hmm. and a lot of the listeners I know for a fact, you know, they have a passion and started a business or have a passion and are thinking about starting a business. And, um, sometimes, sometimes passions can be a little misleading. You, You can't start a business on all passions. Um, but you definitely have to start with a passion in order to figure out what business can come of it. So mm-hmm. Caroline, um, you know, how did, how did you really start making this business, um, become a reality? What did you do that said this business is running? Well, so, um, because of my work for the, the bank that I used to uh, work for, I knew how to build websites cause I did that for, for years. So I started building the website, you know, I already had products that I personally um, tested and used and, you know, had this nice little package. And I just launched my store thinking that everyone would just come and find it and have the same enthusiasm for what if I you build had. it, they will come. Yeah, I know that. Exactly. That thought. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that is definitely one of the things that I truly believed would happen. 
<laughs> because, you know, how could you not want to feel better? How could you not want to have better energy? Um, you know, why would you want to be on medication if you don't have to? And so, you know, that is exactly what happened four and a half years ago. And, um, and you know, it definitely doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it does not. I mean, in the in the heyday, in the early years of uh, search engines uh, like Google, um, that was possible. You build it and make sure Google knows about it and Google will do their best to, to get traffic to you for free. Mm-hmm. But um, Google has changed significantly because that that ability was abused. And uh, there's, you know, even even before Google existed on the Internet, um, or even websites, you know, you start a business and, you know, nobody knows you're in business. You got to get out there and market yourself. So. Absolutely. And and that is key. And that's definitely been one of the biggest lessons that I've learned. And you've definitely helped ingrain this in my brain. But one of the <laughs> biggest things, one of the biggest things that I've done is working in my business versus on my business. And I had heard that before, but I never truly got it until I had the pleasure of working with you and, um, you know, hearing it over and over again and and really, you know, taking my personal development to a whole new level by reading every day. And, um, and yes, that was definitely one of the things that I did starting my business is I was working in it. Um, you know, again, just we're adding more products, researching more products, mm-hmm. uh, you know, blogging and things like that, which is all great. But, you know, if nobody knows you're out there, you can have the best business in the world, but, you know, you're not going to reach people if they don't know you exist. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that I didn't, I mean, I didn't coin that concept. I've I've heard that countless times for for many different people. But once, once you understand uh, working in your business versus working on your business and, uh, uh, what what that really means for your business and for yourself, then you can prioritize and give yourself to time to do both uh, and then move into replacing yourself and really growing your business and focusing then in on what it is you're good at in your business or usually it's you working on your business mm-hmm. um, and move forward. So, yeah, I'm really glad you learned that lesson. <laughs> It's a lesson that that it seems like you only get through experience. You have to have done it in order to understand it. And yeah. uh, being being a solo entrepreneur, a solo s- small business owner, um, yeah, you you learn that firsthand, and then you realize, oh, I've made that mistake once. I better not make it again. But it seems, you know, even I, I get caught up into it. There will be projects uh, with my marketing company that. I just want to work on. I just have to work on that. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got to be a part of it. And um, I've really got to stop myself from doing that sometimes and, and letting my team do what they're good at and why I hired them. Um, and it, it, it can be frustrating, you know, especially when, when that is your passion to do those things. So I know, exactly. I know where absolutely where you're coming from. And I, I'm sure <laughs> listeners know that as well, or at least maybe they're learning it too. I tend to be a perfectionist and one of the things that I've learned as a business owner is you can't afford to be a perfectionist, especially (laughs) when starting out. Yeah. And you know, that was, was very hard for me, um, you know, because I would create banners for my website and I would spend an hour, two hours just looking for the perfect image that would convey what it is that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to convey with the product and, uh, you know, what would happen with a user using this product. And, you know, now it's, I could do a banner in five, 10 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, even though I'm still making my own banners, um, you know, I've really changed the focus on, you know, sales and marketing and just really putting myself out there. And so, you know, to all of you listeners out there, I highly recommend just your perfectionist, you know, you can do that at later, especially when you're starting out. It's just better to do, um, you know, take action and um, and yeah, you just don't have you, you can't afford to be a perfectionist. An imperfect action is better than no action at all. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like maybe you've put a bit of a process to that or at least because you've you've instead of trying to be perfect in how you you 
perform that task. Maybe you've you've learned ways to do it faster and where it's it's more convenient to get it done instead of a burden. Has that happened? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Where now I will do three or four at once. Um, and of course, you know, practice makes perfect. Um, so <laughs> obviously, the, the more I've done, the quicker I am at it. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it still conveys my brand. It's still nice. It, um, I mean, I, of course, I would not post something that I didn't like. Um, so, of course, I still like everything that I, I do. But I just I have let go of that perfect, you know, that per- needing to be perfect. Right, right. Well, it sounds like your next step is then figuring out how to hand that off to, to somebody else to do for you so you can work on other things. Am exactly. I... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, cool. I'm glad. See, and that's, that's exactly, that's exactly where a small business owner needs to be moving forward and how they replace themselves within their business. So I'm glad you're, I'm really glad you're doing that. All Thank right. You. So Caroline, um, you know, you've talked a bit about some of the challenges. What was for you in your mind, what was the most challenging thing uh, with getting your business off the ground? Um, well, off the ground, um, that was to, to be perfectly honest, that was fairly easy for me. Um, I think my biggest challenge has just been getting the momentum that I need with my business. Okay. No, I understand that, that, um, you know, just saying you're in business is pretty easy to do, but then (laughs) actually conducting and and having transactions, that's a whole nother story. So go ahead, elaborate. Yeah, so absolutely, because it's true. You know, it is very easy. You can have a business up and running in an hour. You know, I mean, it, it's it's th- that's definitely the easy part. But I would say, um, you know, just th- kind of what I was saying earlier about just working on my business and working in. So my biggest challenge was that I was working seven days a week on things that I really didn't need to be working on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that was definitely one of my biggest challenges, even though I was seeing growth, it was slow growth just because I wasn't doing the necessary things to acquire, um, you know, new clients to, um, you know, cater to my existing clients and, and things like that. So again, just really focusing on working in my business versus on, and I would say that was my biggest challenge. Um, just, you know, thinking I was doing the right things when I wasn't. Right. Well, and, and it's, it's hindsight's twenty twenty. You don't know you're doing the wrong things until you've hit a wall. And, uh, for, for you and, and I've been in that place before too, the harder you work, the better your business performs, but you have no, no time to do anything else to enjoy life. And, um, it, it, it makes your passion or what was your passion into a pain. You don't look mm-hmm. forward to it anymore. You you lose that motivation and inspiration to to make things happen. And uh, it's you know like you talked about being in in corporate America, working for a very large bank. Um, you you start running into the new things. You you thought you were going to be your own boss, um, and enjoy life and have your own business, but you really traded one job for another, and mm-hmm. uh, you quickly quickly regret doing that but uh, you know there is a way out there's always a light at the end of that tunnel um, once you can start um, looking at your processes taking a step back you know getting out of that daily uh, task list of things that have to happen orders that need fulfilled etc and look around and say ask yourself the question is this really where I want my business to go? Am I doing what I want to be doing? And if the answer is no, then you need to look at what you're doing and and figure out how to change it so you can get back into that yes answer. I'm doing and building and becoming what I want it to be and what my Absolutely. I want myself to be. Absolutely. And that, that brings up another point um, that, you know, I, I, one of the things that I, I've learned is that, you know, and your ego just gets in the way of things. And <laughs> oh, I love of, that. I love that. <laughs> well, it does. And, you know, for me, that was very hard just because, again, and I'm not, you know, bragging or anything, but I have excelled 
in, you know, all the jobs that I've ever had. And um, when I wasn't instantly excelling in my business, it hurt, you know, Mm -hmm. it definitely hurt my ego. And, um, you know, then of course I started having a lot of self doubt, you know, what's wrong with me. Maybe I'm not entrepreneur material. You know, it's very easy, especially being a woman, um, you know, to just, I mean, of course men have this too, but, um, you know, I just definitely started to, you know, have doubt and, you know, well, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? You know, just really taking it personally. But, you know, everybody goes through this, you know, it's the growing pains of a business and, and growth and all of those things. And so for me, you know, I've, I've learned, I've had to um, not be so judgmental um, you know, to be more patient and forgiving with myself <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and realize, you know, that it's just, it's just part of the process. And, you know, when you come out on the other side, it feels really, really good. So personal you know, growth, as as you, you got to allow yourself to grow in order to grow. I mean, it's yeah. the analogy I want to think of is like, uh, like a seed, you know, you can plant it, but it's not going to grow in, unless you give it that ability. You've got to give it the the water, the resources, the sunlight uh, for it to grow. It's not just going to grow when it's stuck in the, the dark, cold corner. Exactly. And if you put yourself, Absolutely. if you put, you know, what is it? If you put baby in the corner, don't put baby in the corner. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. I'm terrible with those. Uh, <laughs> I always get them wrong. Oh, I know. I know. I got to be careful with that. I know. I, I, I know some listener out there knows exactly what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, if you put yourself in the corner and, and you keep your head down and you are constantly just working and working for work's sake, you're not going to get you're not going to accomplish and reach the goals that you want to. You might you might be able to, um, you know, grow a business, but you're not going to be able to grow it in a way that you enjoy that um, you can wake up every morning and be excited about. Um, it, you, you definitely have to make a shift uh, in your business. And it's, you know, I don't want to say that there's monetary goals with that. You know, you, you might not necessarily earn more by making a shift in your mindset. I mean, you have you have greater potential to make t- more money with your business by having a, a shift in your mindset, by outsourcing outsourcing certain elements of your business or bringing people in to handle certain parts of the routine. Um, Ultimately, what you want is to have your cake and and eat it too by having a business that uh, that is prosperous and having a life that you can enjoy in a business life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I I agree a hundred percent. And I mean, one, Another thing is, you know, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. (laughs) And, you know, that's another thing. It's true. It's like everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. And, you know, if you don't push yourself, you're never going to live the life that, you know, you've been dreaming of living. And it's important. And for me, it's taken me a while to get there uh, because I have stayed kind of in the background and um, not wanting to put myself out there. Uh, But now I... I've ch- I'm changing that and I'm actually excited about it, looking forward to it, you know, to making new connections and growing, you know, as a business owner, as an, you know, as a person. And, you know, I'm just, I'm actually really excited about it, but it's taken me a few years to get there. I'm glad you brought up that point because what, what I see is, you know, most small business owners that I've come across have been very extroverted, very outgoing people to start with, then they start their business and they get so balled up in the issues of running that business and and not making it what they perceived or wanted it to be right out of the gate. So they become very introverted and they get caught up with the problems that they might be running into. And they do kind of this 180 with their personality, but it's as soon as, as soon as they ask for help um, or seek help, then they they really start to become who they are again, and um, you know if you're anybody listening to this, if you're running into that, your first step is to understand, hey, you, hey, you're you are in this situation, and number two, you're not alone. Every you know, almost every single small business owner, I, I would say, a hundred percent of the small business owners that I know 
have gone through this. I have gone through it and and you go through it multiple times. You just get better at it because you recognize it sooner and know how to um, prevent it from from continuing further. Um, but it is, you know, build, build those relationships, get uh, get answers to the questions from real people. Don't don't try to get the answer or come up with the answer for yourself. Um, exactly. seek, seek help. <laughs> and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's one of the big, you know, big lesson that I've learned as well is because I was letting my ego get in the way. I mm-hmm. didn't want to ask for help. Yeah, absolutely. And when I finally realized, you know what? My ego doesn't pay my bills. And <laughs> I let go of that. I, you know, I started asking for help. I started working with you, um, you know, and that's when things really started changing for me. It's mm. okay. You know, you don't know what you don't know. It's, you know, nobody achieves greatness on their own. You know, people get help in all aspects of life and business and there's nothing wrong with that. On the contrary, you know, especially if you want to make a difference in people's lives and in the world, you know, you owe it to yourself and everyone else to get help so you can, you know, achieve what you want to achieve and help more people in the process. Yeah. I, you know, being, I, I'm a mentor. I, and I definitely have mentors. I don't have just one mentor. I have mentors um, for, for many different reasons. And each one is I would call the expert for that specific reason, whether it's uh, hiring somebody, whether it is marketing, even though I'm a marketing professional and I have a marketing business, I don't know everything about marketing. My business doesn't do everything under the sun for marketing. And uh, even with a marketing company, there are hurdles in marketing. So it's, 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 um, you know, it, if you let your ego get in the way and if I say, Hey, I'm an expert in marketing and all things marketing and my business does all things marketing, not only am I setting myself up for failure because I can't possibly be an expert in everything and I can't possibly have a business that does everything. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely. You can't be everything to everyone. Absolutely. And you know, that, that, that goes, that's a life lesson. That's a business lesson. <laughs> But then having mentors, understanding that you can't be great at everything and finding mentors who they themselves aren't great at everything, but they do excel at specific things, recognizing that in them and reaching out to them for help, um, creating that relationship. Um, you know, when, once you can do that, a lot of things can happen from it. There's a lot of potential there, whether it's business, a friendship, whatever, whatever it is, um, you can't be scared to ask for help. Exactly. And what I have found, because that was me, you know, scared of asking for help, thinking that would make me a failure, um, which is so not the case. Um, but what I have found is that people love to help. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, the people are honored that you're asking them, that you look up to them, that you consider them experts, you know, in their field. And people really, truly love to help. Mm-hmm. So it's just our job to ask. And, you know, when, um, when it, when it comes to mentors, usually people will seek their influencers, uh, people who influence them. And when it, you can tell right away, once you reach out to influencers, whether or not they're going to be able to help you, one is they're going to tell you <laughs> if they can help you or not. Um, but then number two is how, how they follow through. Um, do they want to take the time and build a relationship with you? And um, if you do that and you do come across people who you wanted to be your mentor and they simply aren't able to do so, you can't get discouraged by that. There are, yeah. there are other people and you should seek out those other people or even ask the person who you wanted to be a mentor if they can recommend somebody else. Um, mm-hmm. Don't, Absolutely. don't let somebody else get in your way from you getting the answers that you need. Exactly. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. Yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, that's why, you know, focus and just being very clear as to, you know, what you want to accomplish, your end goal are, are very important because there will be people who, you know, think you're crazy. Oh, <laughs> time is not right. Um, you know, maybe you should get a real job. Okay. This is all from experience because I've heard this time and time again. Oh yeah. Um, I know it too. Know, sorry. I know it too. I, I, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, I run into it um, probably on a weekly basis. I would say. 
Yep. I, it's, I it's amazing. I've been on my own for years and I still get the occasional, uh, why don't you get a real job? <laughs> oh yeah. Cause I guess I that. the, I guess the, um, the impression is because I, I, you know, I some I don't even call myself employed because I work for my company, um, but they don't realize that, mm. and that's all right because I don't need to explain it to them. <laughs> exactly, and neither- helping lots of lots of businesses out there and making a huge difference in people, you know, huge difference in people's lives, and you know, that's great. You've helped me tremendously. Well, hey, you've helped me too. You know, I I I try to pa- pass guidance, but learn. You know things at the same time. So you've helped me just as much as I've helped you. Probably you've probably helped me even more. (laughs) You just don't know it. Well, that's very cool. That makes me happy. Well, good, good. How much do I owe you? (laughs) (laughs) All right, I joke. I kid. All right, Caroline. So I got I got another question for you. If you could if you could go back and and start over again, what would you do differently? Oh, several things. The first is I, um, I would have kept my job and started building my business on the side mm-hmm. versus thinking it would be an immediate success. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, if you can create it, you know, right off the bat, that's wonderful. But for me, I was just not in a position to invest what I now know I should have invested. And it would have made things a lot easier for me had I had stable income coming in while I was building my business. Well, and you say that invest and it sounds like you're talking about um, uh, money invested, but uh, was it more than that? Was it time? Was it people? What, What was it? Well, you know, I think it's all of the above because it's one of those things that when I started my business, You know, I had so much time on my hands because I wasn't, you know, I was working from home. I wasn't commuting. You know, I didn't have to get dressed for the, you know, going to the the office and things like that. I mean, of course, I got dressed, but you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I, um, what I found is that because I had so much time, I filled in that time when I didn't need to. Mm, And what I mean by that is you know, when you're limited in time, you actually really focus on what's important. Um, you let go of that need to be a perfectionist. And um, I have found that since I've started a second business, I actually, I'm getting more done in less time. And so, you know, that's what I mean by that. I think there there are huge advantages to, you know, starting a side business for that very reasons, at least for me, that definitely has had a huge impact, um, you know, and, and going back to my initial point, you know, it was, you know, I had stresses because I didn't, you know, I didn't have partners. I didn't, you know, get, um, funding and things like that. I was really building my business on my own. Um, there were times where I was, while I was making decisions more out of fear of, you know, how am I going to, um, you know, pay my bills and things like that. And so I made a lot of business decisions that weren't the best just because I I didn't set myself up for success Mm -hmm. in the way that I would now knowing what I know. Oh, those are all great lessons. I don't even know which direction to go with that. (laughs) Cause I I mean, I, I, I feel, I feel that in, in every single way. Um, you know, getting, getting, getting off the ground, using too much time and focusing on, on things that shouldn't be priorities, getting, getting stuck, giving yourself too much to do is, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's definitely a burden. But on the other hand, you were talking about the stress of not having partners, not having investors. And honestly, that's, that's kind of a godsend for you because when you have those, it's even more stressful because now you're playing with other people's money. Now you have accountability to other people, um, which, you know, some people do need, but when you're by yourself, you know, you're accountable to yourself, maybe to your family to, to make sure that this happens. So it's kind of the grass is greener 
uh, when, when you look at it. <laughs> I, I have heard that. That's definitely something I've learned, you know, speaking with other you know, business owners and about, yeah, partners and investments. And, and to be honest, I'm happy with the way things have turned out. Um, you know, but, you know, I definitely see the benefit of, I guess the, the biggest benefit that I, I would, would see is, you know, still having stable income coming in while you build your business on the side, because you will get more done in less time just because you won't have as much time. And there's huge advantages to that. Not not having to worry about how bills are going to pay be paid. Exactly. That can be that can be very convenient. Um, you know, I w- when I really got into my business full time, um, I was my family, my myself, my wife, and my son. We were living on savings, and we only had a few months uh, that I needed to perform and get this going. So uh, it. Uh, I would say I was only successful because I had that looming deadline mm. that money was going to run out. And it, it pretty much, it pretty much took money running out for me to actually get up and make it happen. You know, I had, I, I was procrastinating because I knew that deadline was coming. And mm-hmm. for for me, you know, going back and doing it all over again, I would say I wouldn't have procrastinated. I've learned my lesson <laughs> about procrastinating um, mm-hmm. you know, and it's when, when it, when it push comes to shove, you know, you, you, that task list gets really short because you figure out what those priorities are really darn exactly. quick. And, yeah. uh, and thankfully I've, I've, I've never, I've never had to, to miss a payment on any of my bills. That's, that's kind of the credit for me. That's, that's <laughs> how I know I'm successful or at least was successful, uh, early on is, I was never, I, I never missed a payment, you know, on, on mortgage, car, you know, you name it. I got, I got everything paid. <laughs> That's wonderful. That, but yeah, it, uh, it got, it got stressful. Oh, it made me do things that, um, I, I would not do normally, you know, it, mm-hmm. I was cold calling. I did cold calls. Wow. And, oh, I hated it. I hated it. I hated the, the thought of it. I, I hate being cold called, you know, I didn't want to do that, but it came down to do that. Did I get any business from it? I did not. Mm. I did not get a single piece of business from cold calling, but it, it, it got, got me so stressed that I, I did it. And, mm-hmm. um, um, yeah, I finally calmed down and I, and I, <laughs> I, uh, decided I needed to build relationships and I, and I already had been, and I decided to focus on making those uh, relationships fuller and, and that eventually did pay off. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And you know, that's definitely the key, you know, in my opinion, you know, the key to a successful business is really, you know, developing relationships because, you know, you want long-term partnerships and, you know, you want to grow with other manufacturers, you know, for me, in my case, I, I love to partner with the other small businesses and I want to grow with them. And, you know, I just, I want to be part of their journey just as much as they're part of mine. And, um, you know, for me, that's something that's very important. And so uh, you're, you're kind of playing into, you know, what I stand for and being, being the character in your own story and, and in the story of others and letting them be characters yeah. in your story that, um, yeah, that's, I mean, my slogan is be the experience and you, you're kind of reiterating that uh, when you, mm-hmm. when you are the yep. experience, um, you, you're really being the character that you need to be in your life and in the life and relationships that you're creating. So, mm-hmm. oh, absolutely. I love it. That's awesome. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're showing me that maybe I'm onto something. <laughs> you are. Yes, you are, Chris. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, you know and that, that brings up another point, you know, just, uh, you know, in terms of not feeling alone. I mean, one of the things that I know talking to other, you know, business owners is isolation, you know, especially, oh, when, yeah. you know, as solopreneurs and, you know, that's very normal, you know, for us to feel that isolation. And that's why it is important to have those mentors and, you know, to work with other people to hire you, Chris. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, it's very important because you can just get lost in that isolation. And, you know, when you're, 
your business goals are just much bigger than, you know, your personal goals. And you do want to make a difference in this world and in people's lives. You know, you owe it to yourself to get out of that isolation and to, you know, collaborate with the right people, um, you know, that will help you get to where you need to go. Yeah. And it's, a, I, I run into this. I know you're running to, into it because we, we talk about this. It's that isolation and the isolation is always self-induced. You always bring it upon yourself. And it's because and we go back to how we were talking about the ego. Um, it, when you, it really comes down to when you give yourself too much to do, you only have yourself to get it done. Mm-hmm. So you, that's why you, you, you focus, you prioritize, you, you create um, a, a routine, a schedule to get things done uh, in a timely manner. Um, and, and we've kind of covered all of this. Um, when, once you can really focus and, and really do less, I would say, do less, um, you can then start creating more. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that well, can you know be, what they say, less is more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is because, I mean, that more, when, when you focus on less, you, you can accomplish more. And that can be relationships. It can be more transactions, customers and clients. Um, producing things of value, whether it's, you know, for, for marketing purposes, for internal operational processes, it it doesn't matter. Um, Mm -hmm. there, there's time for those things. If you can make time for it, um, after the other things are out of the way. So, Mm -hmm. um, oh, good, good. This has been a really great talk, Caroline. I'm, 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 (laughs) I, I'm not surprised. I can't say I'm surprised because I knew it was going to be a good one. You're you're full of wisdom, whether you know it or not. So uh, hopefully you, you start to, to understand that about yourself. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, I honestly, it's once I let go of, of well, you know, once I, I um, yeah, I let go of the judgment and the ego and and of course, you know, I still have setbacks here and there, but, you know, I'm I'm a lot more patient with myself and um, I'm kinder to myself. And, you know, I realized that, um, it's true. You know, I, I have made a lot of mistakes along the way. And, you know, if I can help other people not make the same mistakes, you know, for me, that is a true pleasure. So, you know, thank you for having me on. Hey, no I'm delighted problem. to be able to have well, this time with you. Well, we're not, we're not done yet. So don't, don't oh. think about, <laughs> think you're, think you're getting away that quick. That sounds good. <laughs> One thing that um, I've, I've kind of started with this, is, and, and this comes from um, being being in the world of the internet and being in search, and it, for a long time, keywords were a focus. And I think keywords are important to people. People kind of associate themselves with with a quote, um, but that that quote comes down to a, you know what. Th- what is being understood? And that's a keyword, a, a meaning. What keyword um, or what idea, what concept have you found in, in be finding success in your small business or your small businesses? What is it? What would you say is Caroline's keyword? Belief. Belief. All right. Yes. Yeah. You know, be, um, you know, it's like I believe in what I'm doing. You know, I believe that I, um, I'm i here on this earth, you know, to make a difference and, you know, I'm able to help others. And so I really do believe, um, you know, in the common good and that we can, you know, make the world a better place. And, you know, for me, that's definitely been a huge factor in that, you know, I believe in the goodness that could come out of what it is that I'm doing. Yeah. And so that keeps me going every day. And that's great. It, it seems like you probably run into problems when you stop believing. Y- yes, I have to admit, it does, it does happen. <laughs> and in when you run into challenges, if you believe in yourself, you get through them. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, and you know, I think that, to be honest, has been my biggest challenge. There is, you know, I do believe in what I'm doing. I do believe. Uh, you know, in my bigger purpose, but, you know, the belief in myself has been the one that has, you know, come and gone, you know, when I, I didn't see the results that I was expecting to see and things like that, you know, I just, it was, it was, I took everything personally, like I was the failure, I, 
you know, should have done this differently. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, I've let go of a lot of that and I'm just, you know, I just continue to believe, you know, in my, you know, in my business and in my mission and, um, and holding on to that, it has been, well, is critical. Well, you mentioned, um, Excel Vita, your, your, your first business care to share your, your second business that you started. Yes, absolutely. So I, I started, <laughs> I, I started a Starling natural a couple of months ago where, you know, it's a B2B business where I'm, um, importing just high quality, unique products from Provence and beyond and getting to share that with, um, you know, spa salons, you know, high-end gift um, shops um, across the country. So it's two of my top uh, products that I do have on my e-commerce platform. And I just wanted to share these amazing products with more people. And by working with other business owners, I'm able to do that. So comparing your your second business with your first business, how have what what have you learned that you've applied to the second business in order to to, I guess, maybe have a better business or be a better business person? That is a great question. Um, well, the, <laughs> the setting up of Starling Natural took me literally a half day because it was brewing in my head for a long time. So, you know, I created the platform again, imperfectly. I wasn't waiting for it to just be this work of art. Um, you know, but I put it together and I immediately took action with, you know, talking to, um, you know, to people about my products and, you know, learning from other people and, you know, especially in the spa industry, that's something you, Mr. Rissi, have um, taught me well, you know, in terms of um, customer development. And, Absolutely. You know, One of my favorite you know, words, talking... <laughs> keywords. Well, exactly. And learning, <laughs> you know, what is it that people need and you know just wanting to learn about the industry because I do know the natural products industry and retail you know pretty well of course with my e-commerce platform but you know this this new industry you know I instantly you know started talking to people and learning uh you know not waiting years to do that which is kind of what I did with my first business so my my you know sterling natural for me is is um you know has taken off a lot quicker just because I'm a lot more focused. Again, I'm splitting my time between my two businesses, so I have less time, and I'm a lot more focused on what it is that I need to do. Yeah, well, so it good. just feels really good. I've I've seen your passion return. <laughs> so I'm finally I'm I'm really satisfied to hear that you you took took action because I know you were wanting to do it for a long time and you 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 didn't have that confidence. You didn't have that belief. I would say. Mm -hmm. And finally, once you believed in yourself, you were able to, to make it happen. And it sounds like you're, you're already off on a great start. I mean, you started what a few months ago, so you, you've, you've really been growing, I guess. Absolutely. And it feels really good. And, you know, just loving the feedback and, um, you know, people are just loving the products and it just, it feels really, really good. And, and I love to work with other um, small businesses. So for me, you know, going back to isolation, which we were talking about earlier, is I'm getting a lot more interaction with Starling Natural. And that feels wonderful to me because I'm able to truly communicate, um, you know, with my audience. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that because as I'm sure you can tell, I, I like people and, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, um, it's a true pleasure to be able to do, connect with people um, because e-commerce definitely has its perks. You know, you could do it from anywhere, but it's, it's so impersonal where, you know, when my phone rings, I jump for joy because it's, here's an opportunity to talk to, you know, a potential uh, customer. And, uh, you know, I just don't get that personal interaction, which is very important to me. And one of the many reasons I started Starling Natural. The, the opportunity when the phone rings, it's an opportunity to, to make a new relationship, make a new friend. Yes, <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I, I've done exactly that. I mean, I, I have, you know, I have clients who I don't even know and they'll send me pictures of their, you know, their daughter getting married. And, and for me, that's a real, um, it's a true pleasure because even though I've never met them face to face is, you know, I feel like I've, 
I've been building a little family and it's just, it's a real pleasure. You're, I, you're using all the right words. I love the way you're describing how your business process has, has evolved. Um, <laughs> You know, instead of seeing yourself as the provider to your customers, it's you are among them. You are a community member, maybe even a community leader. And Mm -hmm. uh, that, yeah, it um, it's it's not it's one thing to say you're a community leader, but it's another thing to actually be one and act like one. And and you're really doing that. So I'm very Mm -hmm. proud of you, Caroline. Oh, thank you. Well, you definitely <laughs> helped me get there. Yeah, and I, I very, very much appreciate you you being on the show and, and sharing that. It, it, it can be very hard to to come out and, and open up about some of the hurdles. Um, but uh, once you do that, it feels like there's a weight lifted off of you and the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel is shining bright again and you're no longer in that tunnel. Exactly. And I know, you know, it's, we, we all feel like we're the only ones, you know, with challenges and struggles and that's not the case at all. And, you know, it's okay to, you know, tell people that you're struggling or this or that. And, you know, that's definitely one of the things that I've learned. So hopefully, um, you know, you guys out there listening, you know, you're not alone where we all go through these growing pains and, you know, just hold on to your, um, well, just, you know, hold on to your passion and, and your mission and just, you know, just one day at a time. Well, I'm going to put um, the links to your, your sites in, in the show notes. But along with that, I want you to propose a question for the audience because we like to have the audience come uh, back to, to, to the, the podcast site, chrisrissy.com and leave a uh, answers to your questions or maybe even ask you questions and you have the opportunity to talk to them so do you have a question in mind that you would like to get an answer to or even if you want to ask me a question i'm happy to answer you know what is the what uh, what one thing can you do today that you know you need to do but you've been delaying out of fear or you know whatever like what one thing can you do well, today. OK, well, the, the first thing, the first thing, because this is kind of a multi-part answer here is when when you have fear is to understand that um, you, it's not real fear. You don't find your, your gut turning upside down, which you might, but you're not running out the door, running completely away from it and quitting um, that that would be fear. And yeah, that can be that can be a failure if if you sum it up to fear. But m- what most people feel when it comes to getting things done and having fear of doing things, whether it's making a phone call, uh, introducing yourself, um, mm-hmm. having having those those deadlines approaching, um, it's really just worry. And when you realize you're just worrying about it and that you need to calm down, um, you can then prioritize. And having the priorities is is the best way to come combat that or prevent that worry. Uh, when you give yourself too much to do um, and there's you you start to feel overwhelmed, that's when you give yourself the capacity to be worried. And uh, when you can then just focus, have a very short list of tasks. That doesn't mean that you, you don't have tasks every day. I myself like to have three things I want to accomplish every day. And once I get those done, then I can either look at the tasks for tomorrow if I really want to, or I can do other things. And, mm-hmm. you know, oftentimes I, I get I get scared of calling people. Um, and I don't know why I procrastinate about doing it until it gets so bad. I just, I just have to do it. And once I do it, it's like, what was I waiting on? <laughs> that was so easy. You know, it, it was, it was not as bad as I was, thought it was going to be because that's all it is. It's just worry. So the one thing I would suggest about about um, get, getting something done today would be to just do it. <laughs> you just got to do it. That That's what it comes down to. Well, exactly. And, you know, and, and starting doing the thing you want to do. Um, that Well, the one thing that you dread is doing that first thing is actually very, very good because you can find any and every excuse not to do it, you know, if it's end of day. 
So, you know, even exercise, I know a lot of people don't like to exercise. Like I love to do it first thing in the morning because then I will never have the excuse of I'm too tired. Oh, you know, I have to get this done before end of day. But if you do it first thing in the morning, you know, you start off your day right. And it's just, it's wonderful. Absolutely. So hopefully, I hope I answered your question well. I, the listeners, if you do have another answer on when it comes to getting stuff done and, and feeling you know worried about that, um, give us give us your answer. Um, and Caroline, feel free to come back and elaborate more. You talked about um, how exercise is something that that a lot of people don't want to do, and you you. You seem to do that right away in the morning. I, I have my morning routine, which is really quick. Um, and it just, it helps me get my blood going. It wakes me up. Um, it's better than coffee, even though I love coffee. Um, <laughs> that, that, that little morning wake up of, uh, you know, a few push ups. Um, that, that, that's my wake up. Oh, which is fantastic. And, you know, that's another thing. You know, a book that I read a long time ago, The Kaizen Way. Um, is a great book because it really talks about just baby steps. You know, it, it, like you don't have to, if you don't exercise now, you don't have to go work out for an hour. Even if you go for 10 minutes, it's still much better than not doing it at all. Yeah. And that's, I think, one thing that, you know, a lot of us struggle with is that we feel like we have to just do, um, do it all. And it's like, no, because even just, you know, a few actions are better than no actions at all. Absolutely. And we all have to start from somewhere. So I think it's just a matter of starting and doing. There you go. You know, versus waiting until, you know, we have that hour, hour and a half to go to the gym. Yeah, you could just drop and, yeah, do push-ups, sit-ups, and, you know, get going with your day. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I can hear I can hear people right now saying, if it was only that easy. <laughs> and it is. It really is. You just have to do it. Yep. It comes down. Just do it. That was Nike's slogan for years and maybe still is. Just just do it. Exactly. And that's really all it is. You know, it's like as business owners, we have to take action, you know, and yeah, in personal life, business life is just, yeah, just do it. I love it. All right, Caroline. Well, that that comes to the end of the, the interview here. I, I, again, appreciate having you on very, very much. And I look forward to hearing more about uh, Starling National in the future and what things that you're doing there and the relationships that, that you're having. Maybe maybe by way of this podcast, you, you'll you find some, some new contacts and people who are interested in what you're doing and uh, will have the, the courage to actually take action and contact you. Oh, that sounds... I don't bite, so I'm hoping <laughs> for it. Um, <laughs> Any new, anybody and everybody too, and I I really do love, you know, uh, meeting other business owners and you know and anything I could do to help you know for me it's it's a privilege to be able to share some of my you know failures and successes and and help in any way I can so you know hopefully I will connect with you guys out there. Awesome. All right. And thank you very much for having me on, Chris. No problem. Thanks for coming on. If you have any questions for Caroline or myself. Head over to chrisrissy.com slash EP3 and leave a message in the comments section. And as always, be the experience, master your business, and I'll talk to you next time. You just listened to the Chris Rissy Podcast. Get past podcast episodes and more. Visit chrisrissy.com. Be the experience. Master your business.